happen? How could this happen? Yonaka explained, you know, this company's gone through every conceivable legal um, hurdle that, that mankind has ever created. And still it's here, the company that wouldn't die. And why did it get into that position, right? It is what we have referred to as the perfect storm. This unique situation that a financial crisis moves into the car industry like it's going out of fashion. It's, it's really hitting the industry hard. And the largest car manufacturer in the world, General Motors, get in, gets into the most difficult situation it's ever been in. And in order to survive, the company can do one thing only, and it's put its fingers into the most holy of all holy grails, your taxpayer money. And in order to get that money, it has to reorganize itself. So it has to shed a number of brands. Exit, Pontiac, Saturn, Hummer, and Saab. Well, you know, the rest is history now. Hummer didn't make it, Saturn didn't make it, Pontiac didn't make it. I didn't see anybody rallying for those. Uh, and Saab barely, barely made it. It was a very narrow escape. But that perfect storm caused something that was absolutely unprecedented in this industry. It caused a minute manufacturer from the Netherlands to be able to acquire a company, a 63-year-old iconic car manufacturer for the price of the wind tunnel. Now, how can that be? <laughs> it's true. We got the rest for free. We got the 95. <laughs> We got the 9.5 for free, we got the 9.4X for free, we got the brand for free, we got everything else for free. Slight detail is they put it into liquidation. We had to re resurrect it. But other than that, it was fine. And of course, it was, it was a very, very difficult process that we went through. And uh, I'm sure that you as Saab, um, lovers, Saab enthusiasts have been following it from nearby. But I can tell you that one day, when Yanaka, who's going to retire way ahead of me, um, <laughs> when Yanaka and myself are um, going to write up this story, uh, the, the real story will uh, surprise you even more. Because what happened in, those period, in that period was just, I mean, life beats fiction, I tell you that. But anyway, it happened. And um, uh, since then, uh, management has, uh, in an incredible way, put the company back onto its feet. Now, it would be extremely presumptuous for Spiker, with uh, 100 employees making 50 cars a year, to say, well, you know what? We're going to run Saab, right? That's definitely not going to happen. And the wonderful thing about um, Saab is Saab had fantastic management in place. In spite of whatever happened to it, um, in spite of GM running that show in its own way, um, there's a lot of being, negative things being said by GM. And it's, it's a bit easy, because without GM, ladies and gentlemen, there would be no Saab. Maybe they didn't shepherd the company in the way that we would have all liked to have seen, but truly, they spend a tremendous amount of money on that company. If you look at the infrastructure that was given us to us for free, basically, um, they spent like 750 million euros, about a billion dollars in that infrastructure in the past 10 years. The, the weird thing is, that they put the money in the infrastructure, but 13-year-old 9.5s were coming down the production line, right? There was a slight disconnect there. But, it, but it's not like they didn't see that as, as recent. I mean, they saw that. As recent as 2005, GM absolutely allowed and acknowledged that Saab needed to get some of its brand DNA back. And it instructed Yonok and his team to create the new Arrow X that then fantastic prototype that set the new standard for Saab design. Uh, the Saab 9.5 and the 9.4X are direct descendants of the Aero X. And so it is sad, in a way, that the company that put the company where it is today, in fact, can no longer take the fruits of that. On the other hand, what a great opportunity for us. But you have to bear in mind that in this period, of which we're only a newcomer, I only got into this game on the 25th of November when I was sitting in the offices of my partner in London. And he said, did you see that? Koenigsegg deal fell through. Saab is going to be liquidated. I said, you can't, you can't be serious. That's never going to happen. And um, 
He said, well, is this something we should look at? And we hadn't. So far, we hadn't, because we were right in the middle of an acquisition when Saab came onto the market of Braun GP, the former Honda Formula One team that later on in the year became um, um, the world champion Formula One. Uh, actually, we were pushed out of the race to acquire um, Braun GP by Mercedes. Now, most of you don't know about the relationship between the Dutch and the Germans, but it's not very good. <laughs> And to be beaten by the Germans is a traumatic experience. I just have to remember 1974, I was a kid, when we were beaten by the Germans in the World Championship football, soccer, very bad moments, very bad memories. It happened again this year, now by the Spaniards. We had been at war with them for 80 years, you know, in the past. We beat them then, now we lose, it's very sad. But in any event, beaten by the Germans is truly something traumatic. But in this particular case, we thanked Mercedes for buying Braun GP because we had our hands free, and here comes Saab on the market. And I was with my partner, and I said, you know, the, la the longest that Bob Lutz ever took to reply to any of my emails was 13 minutes. But I guess when I'm sending an email right now, he'll be quicker. And, uh, and I wasn't joking. Eight minutes later, I got an email from Bob Lutz saying, hey, Vic, great that you're interested. Let me put you in touch with the guys from Deutsche Bank. They're our sales agents, and uh, good luck. That was good. So uh, next thing you know, I'm traveling to D Detroit to put in my first very bare bone basic offer on Saab. We just had been receiving just a little bit of paper to form our first bid on. And uh, in the context of putting that bid in, maybe it was not such a bad idea to meet the CEO, right? So uh, Janak happened to be in Detroit for a very important board meeting, which was supposed to take place on the 1st of December, the uh, meeting that actually caused uh, Ed Whitaker to take the helm and uh, uh, Henderson uh, Fritz to be uh, ousted from uh, GM. And uh, we met, and I can tell you one thing, we hit it off from the start. Uh, from the moment that we met, we, we had tremendous trust in each other, and I can tell you that there, there's a few things that, that caused this transaction to be successful. One was you. The second one was GM being in distress, clearly. But the third one, was the fact that Janak and myself just hit it off because there were at least 10 moments in time that we could have walked away laughing. You know, it, was, it was so difficult, it was so terrible, this transaction, so incredibly nasty that it would have been so easy to walk away and say, well, just this, this is not for us, we'll, we'll let it go. But I made a commitment. I made a very, very intense commitment, and so did Janak to me, vice versa, that we would see it through whatever the cost, and we did that. And I can tell you, that man is the real hero. Janaka, stand up. <laughs> that man was the captain of Saab that didn't abandon ship. He stayed on board, and as a result, Nobody in the management team left the company. Nobody. They all stayed. <laughs> and as a result of that, there was something to acquire. I mean, you cannot buy a three and a half thousand people business and there's no management. How could we run that? Impossible. What could we bring to the table in that sense? He stayed the course and in spite of all the adversities, he didn't leave. He didn't leave so nobody else left. And that is one of the reasons why we could buy Saab and why we're here today. It's an incredible achievement of which we cannot praise him, for which we can't praise him enough. So next thing you know, on the 1st of December, I'm being called by Deutsche Bank. And they say, um, this guy says, uh, I have uh, interesting news for you. Um, you're looking at a very hot Christmas. I said, well, that's interesting. Yes, you've been selected to uh, pursue your bid for Saab. Um, but you're a public company, right? I said, yeah, yeah, Spiker's a public company. Well, I have to tell you something about this, this SOP deal. I said, well, what is it? He said, well, there are more leaks in this case than in the men's room during Oktoberfest. <laughs> well, he wasn't lying, I tell you that. <laughs> two days later, two days later, we already had to issue a press release confirming that, indeed, we were in the process of bidding for SOP, something that, under a normal... SEC rules in Holland you didn't have to do at all because we were just, I mean, we're just scratching the surface of a deal. 
But um, no, he wasn't lying, and it was going to get much worse before it was going to get better.